Regional Planning Council, Emergency Preparedness Planner, and what I'm going to talk to you about today is the role that GIS and tabletop exercises have with role playing games. So, if you take a look here, one group is playing Dungeons and Dragons and the other group is competing a tabletop exercise. Can you tell which is which? It's kind of difficult, except for the guy in the Viking helmet in the right hand picture in the corner. Sometimes there's giveaways, but other than that, it's pretty much the exact same game. Even looking closely, you see, we have miniature cities, and then we have little action figures, and it's basically the same thing. The only difference is the purpose, and that's to increase emergency preparedness <clears throat> and emergency management. And that's just for fun in Dungeons & Dragons. So we're going to talk about a couple key similarities. We're going to start with the scenario, talk about the participants, a little bit about the rules, and then we're going to see what happens when you increase in complexity, because either way, you're going to want to do that for both of them. So crafting scenarios. It's more open-ended in Dungeons & Dragons because you want to have an adventure, but in emergency management you're really trying to hit some specific uh, target capabilities so that you can make sure that your municipality is prepared for any disaster that's going to come. So what kind of disasters do we have? It could be man-made, it could be terrorism, flooding, tornadoes, all these events, or it could be in Dungeons & Dragons you might have some monsters that are invading your village. But either way, you want to have some challenges in there for the people to respond to. So this is where maps come in. We're kind of setting the stage for the whole scenario with maps. This is something we use in uh, HC, which is Homeland Security Exercise Evaluation Program. People have to create exercises based on what they see here and narratives that are produced with it so that they know what they're preparing against. Now this is one from Dungeons & Dragons. This is called ADAR. And what do they tell us about it? They say, we've got some mountains. From the south, we have manifestations of other worlds, so we have some ghosts to deal with, and then terrible storms. So then the dungeon master is going to throw all this stuff at the people and say, react. This is stuff that we've done. This is a train rail, train derailment <clears throat> that happened in Sanford that we did in a tabletop exercise. So what we created, the narrative, is we have a plume traveling towards the zoo, we have I-4 traffic, numerous injuries and fatalities. Here's another one we did in Winter Park. We told them that there's a huge sinkhole that impacts the cities, the city park, right next to the field where there's about to be a football game, four houses, five houses impacted, and some bunch of infrastructure come to find out. So that's the real scenario. So here's kind of where they cross together. Is this Dungeons and Dragons or an exercise? Do we have a sinkhole and figuring out what infrastructure is going to be impacted, or is something like that going on underground? And that's the correct answer, is that I actually pulled this from a Dungeons & Dragons website, so. And here are the rules. The core rule books for Dungeons & Dragons, we have the Player's Handbook, which has the official rules and some other information about characters, the Dungeon Master's Guide, which is more detailed because the Dungeon Master has a greater grasp of the game, and the Monster Manual with over 200 creeps, critters, and creatures. So here we have <clears throat> the books that guide us in emergency, or in uh, exercise program management, HC Volumes 1 through 4. Each of these has different stuff. One, program management. Two, exercise evaluation. And three, or three is exercise evaluation, I'm sorry. Anyway, players have the same function in both. Look at these people. They're doing the exact same thing. They each have a special area that they deal with. They all talk together to form common solutions and uh, figure out how to react to whatever is thrown at them. Now the planners and the facilitators are kind of like the dungeon master because the facilitator is going to lead the people through the exercise and then the planners are the ones that come up with the scenario, but the dungeon master has to do both of those things in Dungeons and Dragons, so it's a little bit more involved for him or her. So what happens when we increase in complexity? The reason we do this in emergency management is because we want to increase our preparedness. And maybe you do this in Dungeons and Dragons because you want to go ahead and make it last longer than just a couple of you know, nights together with your friends, make into a campaign. So here's an analogy to make it more clear. Dungeons & Dragons is to tabletop exercises, as to live action role play, is to full scale exercises. And the full scale is our most involved and complex exercise that we have. That involves actual deployment of assets and boots on the ground. And here's some pictures. On the right, these are pictures we've done, they're full scale exercises. That's a dummy, I promise. And this is a kind of a triage setup. And then, you know, got some sword fighting, and looks like a baptism or something. So they're kind of different functions, but... Now here's where it gets really interesting. This is something they do in Russia, where it looks like combined efforts, but really it's just a different type of role-playing game, where these people are like in post-apocalyptic radioactive world, but they're all dressed up with their PPE, 
per personal protective equipment. And looks like she's kind of got a radiation dose assessment thing going on, and he's wearing his self-contained breathing apparatus. So it's even the same terminology. So who knows what the future holds, but I think it might look something like that.